Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Thank you for listening to Imagine Wealth Without Risk. In today's episode, we are playing part two from Paul Castillo. If you haven't heard the first part of his interview, check out episode 26. Did you like to buy in rural counties or did you buy in the more populous counties? Okay, and I think I already answered that, right? So I was talking on the thing about how my mentality at the time was to stay away from the more populous or urban or right. urban areas. Okay. And so how did that work out? Okay, so what happened is this was my fourth auction that I participated in. And the first three auctions that I did, I walked away empty-handed. And I remember this auction was on a Monday. And I had gone somewhere over that weekend. So coming back early that Monday, knowing that this auction was taking place and to be completely open, I didn't complete all proper due diligence. And what what happened is I still jumped on the auction that morning, I remember, and I thought I'm gonna at least jump on there and see what happens. And then I made a critical mistake. And I see this, see this mistake happen every single auction to this day that I participate in. And that is that people get, they tend to get caught up in the frenzy. And this, you're going to know this better than anybody else out there. And so I see these parcels that I was interested in getting bid on and then bid on right. some more and then bid up some more. And Uh-oh. I convinced myself that if everybody else is bidding on these parcels, if they're as popular as they seem to be, they must be a good deal. And so I made a critical mistake and I decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start bidding on some of these parcels. And I actually wound up winning the bid on two of these parcels that I had on my list and spent all the money that I had to start this business with $70,000. That's all I had to start. And between the two parcels, I went all in and was excited as can be thought I just hit two home runs and life is great and I'm well on my way only to find out after the fact that they were both duds and my oh, heart sank. No. Yeah, oh, I, no. I, I remember thinking Ted that oh. I, liter- I literally thought that I had just p- uh, pissed away $70,000 oh. oh my god oh what a shock what a shock oh your stomach was turning for a week oh Mm. And so the head was pounding everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't know what shaking. I was going to do, but yeah. see, I, I will say that I was at least wise enough to know that the mistakes that I had just made, it wasn't a reflection of the business. It was simply yeah. a reflection of the way that I had gone about things. And this goes back to when I told you that I was a little arrogant. I just took that mentality of how hard can this be? I'm a smart guy. I've been somewhat successful. I've flipped 15 to 20 homes. And that was a big mistake. And so I knew that it wasn't a reflection of the the business or the opportunity itself. I knew it was my fault for just choosing the wrong approach. And so if you recall, that's when I started uh, working with one of your coaches. And right. I really had to humble myself, and I knew uh, that I had a big mess to clean up. And so that's when I reached out, um, joined your accelerated uh, profit program, and was able to start working with Coach Bill. Oh, thank goodness for that! Boy, oh, that yeah. was uh, oh wow. And uh, what's the outcome? Did you finally get rid of him and break even, or did you lose, or how did that work out? Yeah, so what happened is that Bill helped me put a plan in place where I won't go off into the weeds and go into all the like the details of what happened, okay? But I had two different projects here, properties that I had to basically decide what I was going to do with. And yeah. he helped me put a plan in place where on one of them, I wasn't able to recover what I had put into that specific property. But on the other one, after jumping through many hoops, I was able to make enough profit on that one to where between the two, I at least came out with my head above water. So I didn't make money. Wow, you're a savvy guy. That was savvy. Wow, good for you. 
Yeah. yeah, it turned out okay. I didn't make any money, but I also didn't lose any money. But what it cost me was probably about six to nine months of time. Yeah, but I think you learn more from your mistakes sometimes than you do from some of those great deals. I mean, you, you, you'll never make that mistake again. And, and when you, you started talking there, you said, do you see that at every auction? And absolutely, people just, I have to admit that uh, I've seen people do this based on ego and not based on any financial consideration at all because sometimes they made a lot of money or, or like they sold a house or they sold something they made a bundle and they just think that they're going to they're going to fix uh, they're going to double it again on the next deal and they might double it in the loss column instead of the win column because they don't follow the the step-by-step -step process that every coach will teach you so Pretty amazing. Congratulations. You you learned a lot out of that. You'll never make that mistake again. You have to figure oh, out I never have. Now. Never have. Yeah, yeah. That was over yeah. three years ago. I've never yeah. made that mistake again, but yet every single yeah. auction, I see several suckers that make the same mistake. I've literally seen yeah. properties because as you said, what you see, the pictures that you see of the properties, at least at the oh. auction, the county, what they represent and what's really there can be two very different things. And exactly. I've participated in countless auctions where the people that are bidding, right. what they see on the screen is they see a decent looking or a beautiful looking property. And yet I know for a fact, because I've sent somebody out there to look at the property, that property is burnt to the ground. And oh. these people don't know that. And I've seen people oh. wind up bidding more 80, 90%, sometimes in certain markets that are very hot and popular, even retail value. And I know for a fact that they just lost possibly their life savings. And while you want to feel bad for them, I've learned not to feel bad for them because they didn't do their homework. Right. So to this day, I yeah. still see it. And it's really nice and self-assuring knowing that I'm not that guy, that I'm not yeah. going to find myself yeah. in that position again. You deserve to be a little bit smug at that point, don't you? Because <laughs> you, you've, been, you've been there and done that. I don't think I'll do that. Just let, let that one go and go. Next one. There's always another auction, I tell people, but oh, not yeah. everybody believes me. There's so yeah. many auctions. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Tell us about some of the uh, some of the uh, successes you had. So that's a heck of a way to get into our call. But you, you basically humble yourself not only uh, in person, but you've done it here on the call. And I think people like hearing that someone else made mistakes and they're not the only one that makes them. Tell us about some of the successful things you did. I happen to know that you, uh, and I, I brag about it because I, I try to tell people, for God's sake, call a few people that know the local market and ask a few questions. Oh, they tell me, oh, they cheat me. And I said, what are you talking about? Just ask them. And if you're worried about it, call a broker and tell them, look, you, you may be using their services, maybe not, but you need information. Believe me, they'll give you, they'll tell you what these properties are worth. And I always say, find out what it's what it can be sold for in 60 days. Anything over that, forget it, because it's all made up after that. But if they can sell in 60 days, then you probably get a realistic price. But I know you became an expert at that. You know, I will say that the most important thing I learned is forget what you think you know. So after that first experience, you know, having those two deals under my belt, um, literally feeling like absolute dirt and having oh, to clean dear. up the mess. Again, it was a very humbling experience, and so you just you got to forget what you think because, let's face it, you don't know what you don't know. And I found that it's like sports, right? You could be a very good baseball player. It doesn't mean you're going to excel at basketball. And so yes. I learned that lesson here, right? So I had some success in real estate, but it was a very different niche or area of real estate that I had been doing, and so I had to just – forget what I thought I knew and just humble myself. And I, mean, I just can't tell you how big of a blessing your system and working with your coach and just learning everything that I've learned from you and coach Bill has been. So since then, what happened Thank is the you. very, Thank you. of course. Yeah. And so I remember after recovering from those two deals and being back yeah. on my feet, the very first deal that I did was in the state of Idaho. And so I bought a manufactured home, and was able to sell. Yep, yep. So I bought You're a package. maverick. You really, you really go for the gold and try stuff. Good for you. <laughs> Honestly, I would have never done that if I didn't have Coach Bill to lean on, because oh, okay, I, yeah. Coach Bill's the one that taught me. He's like, I love manufactured homes, and he 
shared some of the success he had with them. And at the end of the day, do you really care if it's manufactured or if it's a, a single family home that's in disrepair or if it's beautiful or if it's just dirt? If the deal makes sense, it makes sense, right? If there's money right, to be made. Exactly. And so that was the first deal that I did after having recovered from those uh, original two deals is I bought this manufactured home in the state of Idaho. And I'm not looking at my actual spreadsheets right now, but I do know that when I sold that property inside of a few months, I made about a twenty-three to twenty-six thousand dollar profit. Somewhere oh, right. Oh, wow, that there. was nice. Yeah. And so, what kind of return on investment? You got twenty thousand? Did you have to put up twenty to make twenty, or how much did you put up to make that? No. Do so at this, at this point, I've got my seventy grand back from those two deals. Oh, nice. Give okay. or take a thousand or two. So I'm whole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. didn't make anything, right. didn't lose anything, other yeah. than the time that it took me to clean that mess up, which I will now say. Now you're I, making I, money carefully. I, I have a title of a course that I wrote. It's called Making Money Carefully. You're the making money carefully guy now. That's right. That's <laughs> you're not, right. You're not taking any risk. You're watching what you're doing. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 And so this particular deal, I believe my investment was somewhere right in the mid-30s. 30, nice. uh, 30, okay, good. You know, good. 36, something like that is what I yeah. paid for this property right. and really didn't do much to it. Idaho happens to be pretty close to where I live. And I also use, I also happened to spend seven years of my life in Idaho. And uh-huh. so I didn't go there prior to bidding on the property because I did everything from home with uh, coach Bill's help. But yeah. Once I was the winning bidder, I thought I would take a stroll up there because it was close enough where I could use it as a good excuse to get up there, visit some old friends. And it was during the summer months. And so I could take my daughter up there with me. And it's so pretty there. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it'd be cool too to teach my daughter, see what she can get out of it too. Show sure. her, dad just bought this home up here and yada, yada, yada. So we went up there and I remember meeting a locksmith up there and, you know, him pounding through the door and putting new locks in there. And to my surprise, it was fully furnished. And I learned that what had happened is there was an elderly man that had lived in the property. His wife had passed yeah. several years before that. And so he was living alone in the home. And the neighbor told me that one day he went to the hospital, never came back. And oh. yeah, I remember the calendar was still on the date, on the month of year where he had oh. gone to, yeah, oh. it, 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 the place was fully furnished. There's still coffee in the coffee pot from a few years earlier. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. But cute little manufactured home in a good neighborhood in one of the, the fastest growing part of Idaho. And so oh. re- really didn't do a whole lot to it. Needed a little bit of plumbing work that I thought I would go ahead and repair even though you yeah. say just sell it as is, I thought, oh, maybe yeah. I can get a few more bucks out of this if I address some of the plumbing work. Did a, just yeah. did a good cleaning yeah. and sold it as a fully furnished washer, dryer, everything. Oh, my and, goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah. Beds, couch, had a china cabinet with china and table. Huh? No I mean, relatives every- showed up or anything? <laughs> no relatives been on it? No. In fact, by what law, you're supposed neighbors? to. Yeah. Yeah. If the neighbor wanted the home and. And they didn't uh, want to pay for it. <laughs> Why didn't the guy go to the auction? Oh, my God. <laughs> Most people just aren't aware of this. It is amazing. There's never, a, I call it the, weir- the world of the weird, folks. If you listen to this, it's so truthful, it's hard to believe. I, even for me. I've been doing it for 30 years. Oh. Ted, I was flipping homes for three years. I didn't know anything about this. And, yeah, yeah. And, and since then, learning more about your program and everything that you've taught me, it's not crazy to, to learn why people don't know about this. It's amazing. Um, it's just, sure, I mean, it, most investors aren't going to tell you about it because they don't want you to come in and be their competition. Your financial well, advisors. Well, that's part of it, Paul. There's actually another side of it. And uh, this is your time in the sun, not mine, but I can tell you it's the government's fault. The government doesn't even tell the next county that they have pro- pro- properties. So if you hadn't bought that property, it might've sat there and deteriorated for, for five years. I see them that do that. They just let them go and the county and the local government does such a bad job of letting the world know about it. It's just shocking. So I, I agree with you. People just don't know about it. So you sold that. It seems to me you made what 50, 70% on that, on your first successful deal. So that made up for a lot of the pain you had before. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm on my way. Everything's great. I'm just as on cloud nine. And then from there, 
The next deal that I did, I went back to Washington and oh. I picked up a five acre parcel. This one had two ma another manufactured home, go figure. Not just one, two manufactured homes on this five acre parcel. Two. Gee. Two. Never heard yeah. of two. I never heard of two on one. Yeah. Because what had happened, see, I came to find out that what had happened is this was an elderly couple that was living in this home and their health yeah. started to deteriorate. And so oh. the county made an exception and allowed one of their children to uh, put a second manufactured home on the property in order to be oh. the caretaker for their folks. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah, so the world the of the weird. The world, yeah. The world of the weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I spent yeah. a few years in this business, and you're going to hear it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah you, know, you know that better than anybody. Yeah. So you, did you buy that one for 20 or 50 cents on the dollar, or what did you have to pay for that one? Or do you remember? Um, let's see. I can tell you if you give me just one second here. Sure. Um, I, I, I believe this property – I use Dropbox, but I've got so much in there that I won't waste your time going through a million different files. But if I recall, this particular property assessed for about one eighty, one ninety. Nice. And I paid about seventy five thousand for that one. Whoa! So you so, paid about what thirty cents on the dollar? Uh, about that. My, I, I haven't okay. always focused on. The way that I've approached this is hasn't so much been a focus on X cents on the dollar, just the spread, uh -huh. right? You, you taught me that you've yeah. got to know your exit strategy. You've got to right. know what your exit strategy is. You, and so I've always made sure that I'm working with local people that know that market right. inside and out. They can go by right. and look at the property for me and not just look at it, but take pictures, send me pictures, yeah. report back to me yeah. on the phone, tell me what they saw. And not just for that particular property, but what about the neighborhood? What kind of condition are all the other homes in? And then mm -hmm. what will this property sell for in its current its condition, right? Let's be conservative. Right, right. And not only right. what will it sell for, but what will it sell for relatively quick? There's right. nothing, there's no, you taught me that there's nothing wrong with leaving a little bit of meat on the bone for the next Oh, investment. it sells much quicker if you do that. It sells quick. Those fixer-upper guys love those things. Exactly. Yeah, all, and, the and, all the flipper guys will buy it in a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I've, yeah. It, I can't tell you how many times I've sold to other investors or flippers sure. rather than just always relying on your traditional retail market. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and so my approach, I guess I can't really tell you how many cents on the dollar because that's really never been the most important thing to me. The most yeah. important thing to me is knowing, okay, I can sell this property in its as-is condition relatively quickly for X amount of dollars, and I'm being conservative. So, so you said it earlier. You're looking for a margin of what, 25000 or 30000 or what do you look for? That's been my sweet spot. My sweet spot or my nice. plan going into this business was if I can do four deals, four or five deals per year that I can make between twenty to $40,000 per deal, that's going to get me to where oh. I need to be. How nice is that? Yeah. And, and there's so plenty of deals to do that, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pl plenty, plenty of deals. That you make. It's when you try to make 100 and get greedy that you get your butt kicked. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you're, you're, it it just know. has to make sense. <laughs> like this particular yeah. one, I invested 75000 or so, made about 35000 yeah. on this one. Yeah. Perfect. There's been others where I've invested as little as there was a vacant lot that I bought. For about nineteen thousand, more than double my money on that one. Made about twenty two, twenty three thousand on that one. Gee, it was on a vacant lot. You made twenty grand on, on a vacant lot. Five, this was a six or seven um, acre lot that was being it was farmed on when I bought oh. this one, but it was in a growing community and really? in, in a desirable area. Yep. Yep. And uh, so on this life one, I just good. had to. Life is good. Life is good. Life is yeah. Life, no life is good. on those babies, right? <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, nothing. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, geez. That's really good. Good for you. Listen, I'm going to run out of time, but I don't want to run out of time without asking you uh, what's the best deal you ever made? The best deal that I ever did last year. So, what I did, Ted, is for the first two years, two, two and a half years, yeah. I did nothing more than follow your, what you call it, your Walmart strategy. Buy low, sell low, yeah. buy, buy low, sell low. Yeah, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. Right. And for right. the first two and a half years, that's all I did because I wanted to build up my reserve. But I'm 42. 
I was about 39, 40 when I first started this business. And so I knew that my goal ultimately was to build passive income. Okay. But you got to start somewhere. And so your Walmart strategy made so much sense for me so that I could build up my nest egg. And because of yep. the success that I've had over the, uh, over those first two and a half years, just doing that, buying low, selling low, buying low, selling low, that put yep. me in a position going into the end of 2018, going into this year, 2019, that put me in a position where I had a good little reserve. And now I was able to use other strategies that coach Bill taught me like land contracts, which you've taught me uh, some about yep. those as well. So the best yep. deal that I've done, this was a commercial property that I picked up late last year. I want to say August, Whoa, September. Commercial. commercial. Beautiful property. Ooh. Two two stories in a waterfront community. And it had a salon in there. And the previous Ooh. owner had owned it for about 20, 25 years. And had, they had this property paid for free and clear. Okay. No way. And oh, my God. What, oh my what God. had happened is the owners had a dispute. They weren't able uh -oh. to resolve it. One of the owners was the one that did all the books. He was the finance guy, the accountant guy, did all the numbers. And the other guy was like the, he was a hairstylist, ran the crew, oh, yeah. yada, yada, yada. They, be, believe it or not, they lost this property. They had this property paid for free and clear, worth about $450,000, and they lost oh, it. They lost it due to about $30,000 in back taxes. Okay. Oh my goodness. I was the winning bidder for this property at $270,000. This is a deal that I couldn't dream of doing three years ago, but after wow. buying and selling using your strategies for two and a half years, I now have enough of a nest egg where I was able to, yeah. to be the winning bidder on this property. And instead of selling this one to make a quick, I could have made a quick hundred grand pretty rather easily on this deal. But yeah. what I did is I actually put a five-year lease in place. It's, at le it's leased at $4,100 per month. And so if you do the math, that's 60 50 grand months. a year. I did it already. 50 grand a year on that investment is what? That's 20, 25%. Oh, my God. So what in the five years, that? in the five oh. years, the lease will pretty much recoup the entire investment that I put into the property and I'll have the property free and clear, paid for. At that point, I can continue to lease it out if I want, or I can just sell it for probably somewhere in the neighborhood of four fifty dollars to 500000 And I would say that's by far the best deal that I've done. That's the American dream, isn't it? <laughs> that's the American dream. Well, congratulations. And, and wow. I want to thank you for wow. everything that you've taught me. Because, oh, you don't need to thank me. You, you did all the work. All I did is uh, show you a little motivation and give you some ideas. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's so incredible. That's a wonderful story. I mean, that uh, you get the gold star for that baby, that's for sure. So that's absolutely incredible. Now, now, did you, was there any unusual things when you started looking at it? I mean, to see a commercial property, it's usually in such disarray, I don't even bid on them, and I tell people they very rarely see one. So now you saw a good one, and the bidding was fierce. So you're, were your knees knocking together, or were you feeling pretty good? I was feeling really good because, again, I had all my homework done. So... There were there were no surprises, right? There was no stone left unturned. I covered all my bases. I had my exit strategy in place. Now, initially, my exit strategy was to turn around and sell it. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. but I've learned that it's also really nice to have two strategies in place, one to fall back on. And so when I first bought it, I was intending to just turn around and sell it, make a quick hundred grand. Right. 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 But th but then. Once I became the new owner and I was in touch with the previous owner and I started to collect information and found out what had happened, I basically inherited a tenant. He told me he would love to stay. And so he stayed in there and I was initially just leasing it to him for three grand. So I started making money from day one. Okay. But he was still hoping that he could salvage his business. And yeah. then within just a few months, he realized that he dug, he was in a hole that was too deep for him to dig himself out of. He went yep. to go work for a different salon, and it just so happened that this guy outgrew his current place. And oh was oh this location, it's the best street in this particular town. It's a waterfront community. It's a destination wow. community. Wow. 
And so he put me in touch with that guy. His lease was about over. And so after catering for about, you know, 45 to 60 days, we came to an agreement, put that five-year lease in place. And I decided, you know what, this makes a lot more sense than just selling this property. Well, when I think about it, uh, well, first of all, I want to say you, you, uh, uh, you've just done a spectacular job. I mean, I couldn't compliment you enough, but the title to this particular podcast is Imagine Wealth Without Risk. And I want you to think of what you've done here. Yes, you could have sold it and made 100000 Now There's a whole bunch of people listening and said, oh, man, if I had 100000 I'd do a lot. If you think about it, you're going to get 100000 in two years, and you're going to get $50,000 a year for the rest of your life if you want. Isn't that pretty much what you just told me? That's right. Yeah, that's right. $50,000 a year for the rest of your life? Oh, my well, God. That's and, well and Ted, the risk if I ever heard it. Ted, not only yeah. that, but not only that, but – because I've been able to take the nest egg that I had made from the first few deals, my, yeah. my passive income each month is actually over $10,000 each month. And that's all due to deals that I bought at these auctions that you taught me, okay, yeah. with a little wow. bit of patience, yeah. three years wow. into it. Look at what you can accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Look what you can accomplish. Congratulations. Give us some final words as you go. I'd like to keep you on here for four more hours, but uh, people driving their car and whatever, and we'll probably have to edit this into two uh, podcasts because this is so fantastic. But what a terrific job you did. And thanks for being so candid. Thanks for being so humble. And thanks for being you. And those two young girls are going to be so spoiled. The rest of the world is not going to be able to handle those two. <laughs> With a dad like you, that, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? Oh, oh God, that's I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. You well, know, all, you, all I'll say you, is, look, if I can do it, I, I truly believe anybody can do it. But I will say, wow. don't try wow. and reinvent the wheel. Follow it. Follow the system, right? It works. Follow the system. It really works. Coach and just go for it, right? Oh, my God, that's incredible. Absolutely. What a wonderful story. Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episode to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.